Good morning, students. I think uh, everyone is fine with your health, right? So be cautious about uh, your health. Then next, coming to this uh, syllabus, I think uh, you are having FA one exam on Monday, all right? So you'll be having three chapters. That is chapter number one, two, and three: nutrition in plants, nutrition in animals, and fiber to fabric. So on these three chapters, you will be having. Uh, 20 marks FA one exam, right? So five marks will be there for oral, and 20 marks will be written. So what we'll do? We'll just recall the words that we have learned in these three chapters. All right. So it is first one that is nutrition in plants. First of all, we should know what is nutrition. Nutrition is rain. Where the food is taken in and that is utilized by the body for the growth and development. For that we are going to call it as nutrition. And then uh, the world will get nutrients like uh, carbohydrates, proteins, fats, vitamins, and minerals. These all are called nutrients. Then types of uh, this nutrition in plants. That is modes of nutrition in plants. One is autotrophic and the another one is heterotrophic. autotrophic means what the uh, plants which are going to prepare their own food are said to be autotrophs because they will be having chlorophyll in them they are going to trap the sunlight with the help of trapping that sunlight in the the chlorophyll what it is doing it is trapping the sunlight and then using the carbon dioxide and water it is going to go under a process called photosynthesis where this plant is going to prepare glucose and then oxygen so oxygen is released to the environment glucose how much it wants food that much it is taking in and the remaining food that is glucose remaining glucose is stored in the form of starch all right so this is about autotrophic nutrition as they are having chlorophyll it is uh, giving a uh, green color to the plant and then this uh, exchange of gases carbon dioxide giving out oxygen right this is going to be done through the small pores which are present on the leaf called as stomata then the next the importance of this photosynthesis the importance of photosynthesis if photosynthesis is not there then first thing no animals could have been alive on this planet because every organism is directly or indirectly dependent on these plants all right then we are getting oxygen oxygen is released once this photosynthesis is taking so photosynthesis aagkole enaktada oxygen bartada oxygen namage ellarige begaagtada illo ha matte so then <coughs> all animals depend on plants for their food directly or indirectly oxygen that is also okay animals and humans breathe in oxygen so what we are doing we are all taking in oxygen and leaving out carbon dioxide so whatever the carbon dioxide is there that is absorbed by all these plants and it is maintaining the balance of carbon dioxide in the nature then next we will come to heterotrophic nutrition here the animals are dependent on other organisms for its food right then uh, in that heterotrophic will come across four types parasitic saprophytic in insectivorous and symbiotic plants so parasitic and rain the these plants what they are doing they are the growing on other organisms so parasites are again what do you plants so bare one plant mele beledu ಅದಕ್ಕಿರ್ತಕ್ಕಂಥ ನ್ಯೂಟ್ರಿಯಂಟ್ಸ್ ಅನ್ನ ಇದು ತಗೊಂಡು ಆ ಒಂದು ಪ್ಲಾಂಟ್ ಅನ್ನ ಇಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಗೋಯಿಂಗ್ ದಟ್ ಪ್ಲಾಂಟ್ ಟು ಡೈ ಸೊ ಇಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಅಬ್ಸಾರ್ಬಿಂಗ್ ದ ನ್ಯೂಟ್ರಿಯಂಟ್ಸ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ದ ಪ್ಲಾಂಟ್ ವೇರ್ ದಿಸ್ ಪ್ಯಾರಾಸೈಟ್ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಗ್ರೋನ್ ಆನ್ ಇಟ್ ಸೊ ಯಾವ ಒಂದು ಪ್ಲಾಂಟ್ ಮೇಲೆ ಈ ಒಂದು ಪ್ಯಾರಾಸೈಟ್ ಬೆಳೆದಿರ್ತದ ಆ ಬೆಳೆದಿರ್ತಕ್ಕಂಥ ಪ್ಲಾಂಟ್ ಅಲ್ಲಿ ಇರ್ತಕ್ಕಂಥ ನ್ಯೂಟ್ರಿಯಂಟ್ಸ್ ಇದೆಲ್ಲ ಕನ್ಸ್ಯೂಮ್ ಮಾಡ್ತದ ಇದಕ್ಕೆ ನಾವು ಪ್ಯಾರಾಸೈಟ್ ಅಂತ ಕರಿತೀವಿ ಫಾರ್ ಎಕ್ಸಾಂಪಲ್ ಕುಸ್ಕುಟ ಅಂಡ್ ಡಾಡರ್ the next saprophytes what the saprophytes are doing these are feeding on dead and decaying organic matter 
ಇವು ಡೆಡ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಡಿಕಿಂಗ್ ಆರ್ಗ್ಯಾನಿಕ್ ಮ್ಯಾಟರ್ ಮೇಲೆ ಅವಲಂಬಿತವಾಗಿರುವುದರಿಂದ ಇವಕ್ಕೆ ನಾವೆಲ್ಲ ಸ್ಯಾಪ್ರೋಫೈಟ್ಸ್ ಅಂತ ಕರಿತೀವಿ ಫಾರ್ ಎಕ್ಸಾಂಪಲ್ ಮಶ್ರೂಮ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಇವನ್ ಈಸ್ಟ್ ದೆನ್ ಇನ್ಸೆಕ್ಟಿವ್ ವರ್ಸ್ ಪ್ಲಾಂಟ್ಸ್ ದೀಸ್ ಆರ್ ಗೋಯಿಂಗ್ ಟು ಟ್ರ್ಯಾಪ್ ದ ಇನ್ಸೆಕ್ಟ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದೆನ್ ಇಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಅಬ್ಸಾರ್ಬಿಂಗ್ ದ ನ್ಯೂಟ್ರಿಯನ್ಸ್ ಪ್ರೆಸೆಂಟ್ ಇನ್ ದಟ್ ಇನ್ಸೆಕ್ಟ್ ಆ್ಯಕ್ಚುಲಿ ಇನ್ಸೆಕ್ಟಿವ್ ವರ್ಸ್ ಅಲ್ಲಿ ಕ್ಲೋರೋಫಿಲ್ ಇರ್ತದೆ ಅದು ಫುಡ್ ತಯಾರು ಮಾಡ್ತದೆ ಫೈನ್ ಅದಕ್ಕೆ ನ್ಯೂಟ್ರಿಯೆಂಟ್ಸ್ ಇರೋಂಗಿಲ್ಲ ಹಿಂಗಾಗಿ ಏನ್ ಮಾಡ್ತದೆ ಇನ್ಸೆಕ್ಟ್ಸ್ ಅನ್ನ ಟ್ರ್ಯಾಪ್ ಮಾಡಿ ಆ ಇನ್ಸೆಕ್ಟ್ ಅಲ್ಲಿ ಇರ್ತಕ್ಕಂಥ ನ್ಯೂಟ್ರಿಯೆಂಟ್ಸ್ ಅನ್ನ ಈ ಒಂದು ಇನ್ಸೆಕ್ಟಿವರ್ಸ್ ಪ್ಲಾಂಟ್ ಏನ್ ಮಾಡ್ತದೆ ಕನ್ಸ್ಯೂಮ್ ಮಾಡ್ತದೆ ಲೈಕ್ ವೈನಸ್ ಫ್ಲೈ ಟ್ರ್ಯಾಪ್ ಪಿಕ್ಚರ್ ಪ್ಲಾಂಟ್ ಆಲ್ರೈಟ್ ದೆನ್ ವಿಲ್ ಕಮ್ ಅಕ್ರಾಸ್ ಸಿಂಬಯೋಟಿಕ್ ಪ್ಲಾಂಟ್ಸ್ ಈ ಸಿಂಬಯೋಟಿಕ್ ಪ್ಲಾಂಟ್ಸ್ ಅಂದ್ರೆ ಏನಪ್ಪಾ ಅಂದ್ರೆ ಅವು ಒಂದಕ್ಕೊಂದು ಬೆನಿಫಿಟ್ ಆಗ್ಬೇಕು ವಿ ಕಾಲ್ ಇಟ್ ಎಸ್ ಮ್ಯೂಚುಯಲ್ ಬೆನಿಫಿಟ್ ದ ಪ್ಲಾಂಟ್ಸ್ ವಿಚ್ ಲಿವ್ ಇನ್ ಅಸೋಸಿಯೇಷನ್ ವಿತ್ ಅದರ್ ಪ್ಲಾಂಟ್ಸ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಶೇರ್ ಶರ್ಟರ್ ಅಂಡ್ ನ್ಯೂಟ್ರಿಯೆಂಟ್ಸ್ ದೇರ್ ಬೈ ಮ್ಯೂಚುಯಲ್ ಬೆನಿಫಿಟಿಂಗ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ಈಚ್ ಅದರ್ ಆರ್ ಕಾಲ್ ಸಿಂಬಯೋಟಿಕ್ ಪ್ಲಾಂಟ್ಸ್ ಇಸ್ ಅದ್ ಒಂದು ಎಕ್ಸಾಂಪಲ್ ಲಿಚನ್ಸ್ ಆರ್ ದ ಆರ್ಗನಿಸಮ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ ವಿಚ್ ಫಂಗಸ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಗ್ರೀನ್ ಅಲಗ ಲಿವ್ ಇನ್ ಅಸೋಸಿಯೇಷನ್ ವಿತ್ ಈಚ್ ಅದರ್ ಸೊ ಲಿಚನ್ಸ್ ಏನಪ್ಪಾ ಅಂದ್ರೆ ಇಟ್ ಈಸ್ ದ ಆರ್ಗನಿಸಮ್ ಇನ್ ವಿಚ್ ಫಂಗಸ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಗ್ರೀನ್ ಅಲಗ ಇಸ್ ಲಿವಿಂಗ್ here the fungus has to get benefit from that uh, what is that green alga and that green alga has to get benefit from this fungus edak na mutually benefit anta karithivi so inta ond organism na venu anta karithivi symbiotic plants anta karithivi then next replenishing nutrients in the soil uh, please go through that all right and then uh, coming to the next chapter that is nutrition in animals ಇಷ್ಟೊತ್ತು ನಾವು ನೋಡಿದ್ದು ನ್ಯೂಟ್ರಿಷನ್ ಇನ್ ಪ್ಲಾಂಟ್ಸ್ ಆಯ್ತು ಈಗ ನ್ಯೂಟ್ರಿಷನ್ ಇನ್ ಅನಿಮಲ್ಸ್ ಇಲ್ಲಿ ಏನ್ ಇರ್ತದೆ ಅಂದ್ರೆ ದೇರ್ ವಿಲ್ ಬಿ ಫೈವ್ ಸ್ಟೆಪ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ವಾಲ್ವ್ ಇನ್ ದಿಸ್ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ಇಂಜೆಕ್ಷನ್ ಸೆಕೆಂಡ್ ಡೈಜೆಷನ್ ಅಬ್ಸಾರ್ಪ್ಷನ್ ಅಸಿಮ್ಯುಲೇಷನ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಇಂಜೆಕ್ಷನ್ ಸೊ ಶಾರ್ಟ್ ಆಗಿ ಹೇಳ್ಬೇಕಂದ್ರೆ ಇಂಜೆಕ್ಷನ್ ಅಂದ್ರೆ ಏನು ದ ಪ್ರಾಸೆಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಇನ್ಟೇಕ್ ಆಫ್ ಫುಡ್ ಸೊ ನಾವು ಏನೋ ಒಂದು ಆಹಾರವನ್ನು ತೆಗೆದುಕೊಳ್ತೀವಲ್ಲ ಆ ಒಂದು ಕ್ರಿಯೆಗೆ ನಾವು ಇಂಜೆಕ್ಷನ್ ಅಂತ ಕರಿತೀವಿ ಆಮೇಲೆ ಏನಾಗಬೇಕು ಅದು ಡೈಜೆಷನ್ ಆಗಬೇಕು ಒಳಗೆ ಬಂದಿದ್ದ ಏನಾಗಬೇಕು ನಮ್ಮ ಸ್ಟಮಕ್ ಅಲ್ಲಿ ಇಟ್ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಟು ಗೆಟ್ ಡೈಜೆಸ್ಟೆಡ್ ದಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಡೈಜೆಷನ್ ನಂಬರ್ ಟು ದೆನ್ ತ್ರೀ ಅಬ್ಸಾರ್ಪ್ಷನ್ ಸೊ ವಾಟ್ ಎವರ್ ದ ಡೈಜೆಸ್ಟೆಡ್ ಫುಡ್ ಈಸ್ ದೇರ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ದಟ್ ವಾಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಗೋಯಿಂಗ್ ಟು ಹ್ಯಾಪನ್ ಇಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಗೋಯಿಂಗ್ ಟು ಅಬ್ಸಾರ್ಬ್ ದ ನ್ಯೂಟ್ರಿಯೆಂಟ್ಸ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ದಟ್ ಡೈಜೆಸ್ಟೆಡ್ ಫುಡ್ ದಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಅಬ್ಸಾರ್ಪ್ಷನ್ ದೆನ್ ಅಸಿಮ್ಯುಲೇಷನ್ ವಾಟ್ ಎವರ್ ದಿಸ್ ಅಬ್ಸಾರ್ಪ್ಷನ್ ಇಸ್ ಡನ್ it has to be used for the body's development adakku naavu assimilation anta karithu aamele last process yavudu ingestion ingestion first one second digestion third absorption fourth assimilation and fifth ingestion so whatever the remaining part is there after digestion that is undigested food is thrown out from the body adakku naavu en anta karithivi ingestion anta karithu then now uh, when we come across nutrition in amoeba what it is doing it is uh, surrounding the food particle it is engulfing it and then food vacuole it is breaking that and again the waste is also thrown out of its body but remember it is not having any food we call it as pseudopodia pseudo means false podia means food so using its false feet it is sur- uh, circling that food and then consuming it all right then when we come across nutrition in humans for nutrition in amoeba they have given a diagram please go through that also right then coming to nutrition in humans so here the process that i said no ingestion then digestion then absorption assimilation and ingestion and we have uh, even now uh, they are given about uh, types of teeth right incisors canine premolars and molars what is the function of it so we have four types of teeth in our body that is incisors canine premolar and molar and you should read what are the functions of these uh, teeth also then the next
uh, eat that and get it digest. The teeth of these ruminants are so designed that it is used for cutting and chewing of that grass. There is a special chamber called rumen which is making the grass to be digested. Here we come across the words called cud, right? Which has been swallowed, is brought back to the mouth for re-chewing it. Like now, cud and the karit. Amele, even the ruminants only, it will be having four, uh, four chambers of stomach. Alright? So this is about uh, nutrition in animals. Then third, coming to fiber to fabric, we all know that there are two types of fibers. One is natural fiber and the other one is synthetic fiber. In a natural fiber, we are going to have two types. One is plant fiber and the other is animal fiber. So plant fiber and animal fiber are natural fibers. We are obtaining it, we are getting it naturally. The fiber obtained from plants is said to be plant fiber and the fibers that are obtained from animals are called as animal fiber. So these two are occurred naturally in this environment. That is why we give that as natural fiber. The next second one synthetic fiber. What is happening here? That synthetic fiber is prepared in the uh, what is that industries using chemicals. For that we call it as synthetic fiber. So first one coming to wood. We all know that wool is uh, mainly occurred, mainly obtained from sheep. Apart from sheep, there are many organisms like an uh, animal called ak, animal yak, which is living in uh, Ladakh and the Tibetan region. It is having fur on its body. So from there we can obtain wool. If we are going to get wool from a Kashmir goat, Angora rabbit and even from camel, all right, and uh, the animal called chiru, which is uh, on the verge of extinction. So, for its uh, fur is also very uh, important, and uh, we know that uh, Shahatush is called as the king of fine woods that is obtained from this chiru, Tibetan antelope. We call it as Tibetan antelope, that is chiru, its wool known as Shatush that is called as a king of fine woods. Then how this production of wool is done? Actually first the wool is removed from the body that is sharing. Then after removal it has to be washed to remove the dirt, dust and grease whatever is there on that wool that is scouring. Then it is uh, grading and sorting is done. Quality of wood depending on the quality of wood it is sorted out and then it is colored, dyeing, we call it as dyeing and then it has to be dried. This is how the production of wool is. Then next we will come across the another animal fiber that is silk. So here silk moth is going to lay eggs and those eggs are kept in a suitable condition for its hatching. So after hatching the moths come out of it, they are continued, we call it as a caterpillar. Right? So those eggs are going to hatch, hatch into a caterpillar and that caterpillar is continuously fed with mulberry leaves. Then at certain stage it stops eating, then it is ready to spin cocoon and then cocoon is going to be spun around it. Then those cocoons are uh, put in a hot water so that we can obtain that silk fiber from it. This is of silk and even its production. And then at last health hazards in this wool and silk industry. This wool industry is the silk industry. All the workers are the same. All the workers are the workers. All the workers are the same. All the workers are the same. That is first thing. In wool industry, these sorters will be having a disease called as sorters disease. Popular known as sorters disease. A sorters disease is the same. That is anthrax. It is coming by bacteria called anthrax and they will be having some respiratory problems and then uh, 
the workers in silk industry have to dip their bare hands into hot water so le silk industry oluga workers a bisni nodu kai tegitarla hing madodrinda wounds form aagta pa mele amile continuous vapor bartta iradrinda avarige en aagthade andre they are going to suffer from respiratory diseases and this reeling of silk requires a large amount of time so as the workers stand continuously for 12 hours they will be having some problems with their spine problems and uh, even related to vision and then also back it all right so this is about uh, chapter number 3 fiber to fabric so i want you to go through all the exercise of these three chapters and understand it carefully whatever you have uh, been thought understand it thoroughly and uh, keep reading that is mean right so we'll see you in the next class take care of your health stay home stay safe all the best for your everyone thank you